Hi, it's Vex, and today we have a special, special deck tech for you. A deck tech on Hapshap Oasis. Hapshap Oasis is, you know, if you've watched my channel and seen another popular YouTube channel, Content Creator, you'll know that this is their favorite card. Why? I have no idea. Hopefully they can explain it to you. If you know who that person is, write in the comments below. But this is our commander. No, not that one. Has his on Shaper of Sand. Right there, Naya Commander. Red, green, white. Legendary creature, human warrior. Desert Walk. This creature can't be blocked as long as defending player controls a desert. Which is very extremely rare, but could happen. Scavenger Grounds is a desert. You may play desert land cards from your graveyard. Whenever a desert enters a battlefield under your control, create two... 1-1 one, one red, green, white sand creature tokens. I was lucky enough to have one of these. It's weird. It's a gold token, but it doesn't have like the little multicolors. But it's a red, white, green, not all five colors. Tokens. So, what this deck asks you to do. Asks you to do is have deserts and create tokens. So, we went with the, of course, the desert theme. This is the most important desert. This is our mascot right here. Put right there temporarily. We play a bunch of deserts, so we can play them back from our graveyard. Then we have tokens. It makes tokens, so we have a token theme. So, as you can see, and as I say in every one of my videos, definitely have your tokens. This deck produces a lot of tokens. This is a token landfall deck, which is super cool because you know there's a lot of landfall cards that generate tokens. And this, essentially, you know, is a landfall generate tokens. I guess desert fall to be more specific generate tokens before we move on don't forget to have all these tokens have all your tokens because they're all different they have all different keywords different power toughness different colors uh don't confuse your opponents too much have all your tokens i have the deck list in the description below if you're curious with all those cool desert cards what's had this on let's get to the deck tech the first set of cards we have are the desert tutors i know it doesn't say desert i always think it says desert but it's desert tutors we have two signpost desert tutors right here. Chef and Monitor, five green. Uh, you never want to pay that. You just want to pay the cycling. Three and a green. When you cycle Chef and Monitor, you may search your library for a basic land card or a desert card, put it into a battlefield. Then shuffle. That it, does, it doesn't need to be tapped, put it on battlefield. And you still get to draw the card. So it is like a cultivate for deserts. Right there, Chef and Monitor. And can be countered for a bonus. We have Hour of Promise. Search your library for up to two land cards. Put them onto the battlefield. Any land cards tapped. Then shuffle your library. If you control three or more deserts, create two black zombie tokens. That's right. So you can get your deserts with Hour of Promise. Right there. We have other tutors. We have Elvish Reclaimer, Night of the Reliquary. You know, tap, sack a land. Find uh, a desert, of course. Uh, this is any land. This is a plains or a forest. So just be careful. You can always sack those. Crop rotation. Uh, sack a land. You know, find any card. Desert, of course. And you know what desert to find? You want to find your Hashap Oasis. That is your first number one desert to find. That's the rule of Hazazon. Find Hashap Oasis first and then find other deserts later. Yes. And I totally forgot at the beginning of the deck tech. Oh man, how can I forget? Hashap Oasis, land, desert. Desert is just a subtype given to a bunch of lands in um, Hour of Devastation, Amon Ket, and then the original Desert from, I think, Arabian Nights has a type. The original Desert is not in this deck because it's not that good. Uh, so we have these cards here. Search for some lands. Search for some more lands. Search for some more lands. Essentially, they're used to search for lands. And when I say search for lands, search for any lands, um, which is really cool, instead of searching for like basics. So we have these as non-basic land search, desert search, desert tutors. And because we're you know finding these lands with our land tutor package right here, some of them put it into our hand, like Nylea's Intervention um, puts it into our hand and such. Uh, we want to play extra lands. And because Hazazon lets you play deserts from your graveyard, and we'll get to how to sacrifice these deserts. Um, some naturally sacrifice themselves. Some require a little extra assistance, but some cycle, get to the graveyard, allow you to play extra land, so you play more lands from your hand, from your graveyard, etc. These are extra land drops here. Expiration, just get an extra land drop. Azusa, extra two land drops. Dry Elysian Grove, extra two, extra one land drop, sorry. Can make uh, all lands into all basic land types, so you can sack it to Night of the Reliquary, or tap for any mana. Wayward Swordtooth, extra land drop. 
Mina, and then Wildborn extra land drops. And you return lands to your hand, so you can either, you know, re like cycle them back into your graveyard, play with Haz Hazazan, Oracle Moldaya, and C Corsair Crufix. This one gives an extra land drop, but lets you play lands off top of your deck. Helps you accelerate those uh, deserts right out back onto the battlefield, sack them, put them back on the battlefield. Kind of like a, a bunch of recycling of deserts. But we'll, we'll see that in, in the gameplay. As mentioned before, these are sack outlets. This is pretty cool. These two are pretty cool. So Sylvan Safekeeper and Zoran Orb. Sack a land, target creature gains Shroud. Shroud, not health proof. So even you, you can't target the creature. And then Zern Orb, sack, gain two life. So what's really cool with the extra land drops that we had, we could sack, you know, our Hash Up Oasis, Sylvan Safekeeper, play it back from the graveyard, sack it, or sack it for Zern Orb, gain two life, play it back from the graveyard, sack it again, play it back again with our extra land drops. So get good value off of our extra land drops and our sack outlets. We don't have a lot of sack outlets because, you know, they're kind of redundant after a while. We have two other ones, Sprout and Goblin from Dominaria United, which I really like. It's one in red. It's got ability, red, tap, sack of land, draw a card. And then it has the uh, kicker. When it ETBs, if it's kicked, search a library for land card with basic land type, reveal it, and put it in your hand. So, if you pay three mana, you get a dude and a land, or maybe a triome, into your hand. It's cool. And here he's lithoforming, X red, red. Sack X lands for each land, sacrifice this way. Draw a card, you may pay, uh, play X additional lands this turn. Lands you control enter the battlefield tapped uh, this turn. So you can sack all your deserts with hazards on the board and just replay all those deserts because you get all those additional land drops. This is where we have backup for hazards on. If hazards on, on the battlefield, lockdown, or wherever, we still have redundancy in Ramnet Excavator and Ancient Green Warren. This lets you play any land from your graveyard. This has the same text, lets you play lands from the graveyard. But this is really synergistic with the deck, because if a land entering the battlefield causes a trigger ability of a permanent you control to trigger, that ability triggers an additional time, including the sand token triggers on Hazazon. We have Satana to get a land from your um, graveyard back to the battlefield, and gives you dudes if you uh, sack lands and go, they go to the graveyard from the battlefield. Life from the Loam can help you know dredge and fuel your graveyard so you can play use Hazazon. Splendor Reclamation, you know, sometimes you want all your lands back for a giant landfall combo. Battlegate Recovery, I love Battlegate Recovery. Uh, get something back from the graveyard. And, if you didn't know, you can use Battlegate Recovery with Ramnet Excavator and Green Warden. If this is in your graveyard, right there, you, you could play it as the land side from your graveyard with these effects. So that's a really cool, cool interaction. This is the most exciting part here. This combines what he Hazazon's trying to do. Landfall and tokens. So each of these are landfall, create a token. One land ETBs, create a token. These don't create creature tokens, but you know, this one create a treasure or a food. Clues, Scoot Swarm is insane. Let's take a quick read. Whenever a land enters a battlefield under your control, create a 1-1 one, one green insect creature token. If you control six or more lands, which is really easy with this deck, create a token that's a copy of Scoot Swarm. It gets out of control because it copies itself. A Merry Angel, which I love. And I rarely get to play, but it is an angel. You know, landfall, 1-1 uh, one, one white bird with flying. So, and it's also flying. And it's white, so it's rare. You know, usually they're green and red. So you get a white landfall creature. These two very famous landfall creatures, Rampaging Baloths, Avenger of Zendikar. This one's landfall, make a 4-4. Four, four. This ETBs makes tokens, landfall, make those plants bigger. Omnath, landfall, make a big daddy Omnath. Then um, when those little Omnaths die, Omnath, Locust of Rage, or another Elemental dies. Deals 3 damage to any target, so bolts everything. Felt our Retreat, I love this one. This one's really good, because Landfall, make a dude, or put plus one, plus one counters on all your dudes. So if you think you have enough creatures, you just put plus one, plus one counters uh, instead of making cats. Not only do we have those Landfall creatures, we have more token makers. We have Secure the Waste, make tokens at instant speed, March of the Multitudes, Make tokens with Convoke and also with Lifelink. Just in case you need that sweet, sweet life if you don't have the Zern Orb. Grand Crescendo. I love this card. This should be an ultra staple in a lot of decks. Make a token. Make X tokens. And creatures you control gain indestructible until end of turn, including the creatures that you just made. So you just pay white, white and just make use indestructible mode or you can make tokens and make everything indestructible. I think it's very good. On brand, Sandworm Convergence. Right there. 
Creatures with flying can't attack you, which is great. At the beginning of your end step, make a dude. A 5-5 five, five green worm. And it's in the sand, the desert, right? On brand. Okay. These are token synergy cards. They don't actually make tokens, but they're really good with tokens. Let's say you go here. Impact Tremor. Whenever a creature ETBs, this deals one damage to each opponent. This makes two sin tokens. This will do two damage to each opponent. They die fast. Porphyros is more insane than that because when a creature ETBs, it deals two damage. So has is on one land drop, deals four. It's insane. Then, you know, I've never really seen people do it, but you could use two in a red to uh, pump creatures you control. And eventually, if you can do this too, which I have seen done, Perforos becomes a creature, um, you know, wakes up and becomes a creature with five, five red devotion. Cathar's Crusade. Um, I only recommend playing this if you have tons of dice because it goes out of control. Whenever a creature enters a battlefield under your control, put a plus one, plus one counter on each creature you control. So, makes two creatures, triggers this twice, puts two plus one, plus one counters on everything. Everything gets huge, really fast, out of control. Then we have one of the best finishers right here, Jetmir himself. Jetmir, next is a Revel. One red, green, white. Legendary creature, Cat Demon. I love the Cat Demon part. Creatures you control get plus one, plus zero, and have Vigilance as long as you control three more creatures. Easy enough. And then, if you control six more creatures, they gain Trample and plus one, plus zero. And if you have nine creatures, plus one, plus zero, and Double Strike. That's insane. It's easy to have nine creatures in this deck. And it turns Secure the Waste for eight. Play Jet Mirror. You automatically have nine creatures. There are four ones with um, Vigilance, Trample, Double Strike. Insane power, insane finisher. I would play this. I would Sandbag uh, Jet Mirror. Play it later when you're about to do the finishing blow. Because usually when Jet Mirror gets played on the battlefield, it gets destroyed right away. Of course, you have another high priority um, target in Hezazan. We have some card draw. We do want to get through our deck a lot. We have some card advantage cards like Oracle Moldiah, of course, or Crufix, but this is just raw card draw. These three are token card draw, amazing. Welcoming Vampire, Mentor of the Meek, essentially. Uh, creatures two less, draw a card. You pay one draw a card, you draw a card once a turn with Welcoming Vampire. Rumor Gatherer lets you do, do a lot of scrying. So when I have another creature AETB is under your control, scry one. If this is the second time this ability resolves this turn, draw a card instead. So, Rumor Gather and Hazazon, you always, you know, scry one, then draw a card, because you get two creatures. Shamak Re Revelation, really good in gold wide decks. Draw a card for each creature you control. And Ferocious, keep forgetting that, you gain four life for each creature you control, power four or greater. Which doesn't happen very often, but can ha happen with Jet Mirror and such. Or Cathar's Crusade, Idol Oblivion, uh, tap, draw a card, activate when you create a token. Skull Clamp, insane. In this deck, you're making tons of little creatures, and you just clamp them all, draw tons of cards. Skull Clamp is your number one priority for searching, if you can get it. We have your Removal Suite, Single Target Removal Swords, Plowshares, Beast Within, and Generous Gift. They do the same thing, make 3-3, three, three, but destroy any permanent. Cast Warp, you know, shuffle permanent back in the library. Very good removal here. Only high power removal in the arts. <laughs> Has his on Hash Up Oasis deck, right? Vandal Blast, Blast and Sack, Manager's Horde, uh, Austere Command, this... Two board wipes, unconditional, well, almost unconditional board wipes. Uh, then we have Austere Command. You can get rid of artifacts, enchantments. Importantly, you can get rid of all creatures with uh, mana value three or less, which means these are zero mana value. Or you can just get rid of big stuff. We have all small stuff. We can just maybe just get rid of big stuff and keep all small stuff around. Destroy all enchantments if we want to. Then we have the meanest card available right there, or shards. When a creature ETBs. Under your control, you may destroy target artifact or enchantment. That's two ETBs with that. Insane removal. Then we have the last two cards before the lands. We have our soul ring. Because we're you know you're ramping with deserts and finding them other ways. Then you have Soul Guide Lantern for Graveyard Hate. I love Soul Guide Lantern because if you read it, exile each opponent's graveyard. So you can keep your graveyard intact to do graveyard shenanigans. This is exactly why I say have graveyard hate, because this deck is all about graveyard shenanigans, not a hundred percent. But does have a lot of graveyard shenanigans, so that's why Soul Guide Lantern is so good. It keeps your graveyard intact while removing all theirs. This is what you all have been waiting for, the deserts. So, I don't have a lot of deserts, but remember we have tutors that get deserts from our um, our deck. Like Chef and Monitor or Hour of Promise. Just those tutors. So, remember, target number one. You always want to tutor for Hash Up Oasis. That is target number one, period. Always tutor for this. Uh... For the memes, of course, that's why. All right, besides the memes, okay. 
we have our cycling deserts right there cycle for one in the color and this puts it right in the graveyard i'll play with hazards on so these are the cycling deserts there we have the sack deserts which you could just you know generate colorless pay one life generate colored or sack it at sorcery speed well oh, this is instant speed sweet these two are sorcery ram that ruins instant speed two damage each opponent play it sack it deal two damage play it again sack it deal two damage you can do a lot of damage or it is very mana intensive uh gives your creatures plus one plus one gives a creature plus three plus three so not the greatest effect but you can use it to uh oop, wrong card on top to get into graveyard then we have rainbow lands you you know one colorless tap to add any one of any color and then you can tap an untapped creature you control at one of any color now playing this desert land base uh, before go to a colorless desert requires you know a lot of single colored this is hard to activate the double color without other conditions and these are colorless so we are playing three colored deck we have to make uh concessions you know for these desert cards our man base and our color requirements might be a little rough because you know playing a three color commander cast uh, our commander on turn three on time uh might be a little rough so just uh understand that you know our man base might not be the best but this is the way it is because of uh desert fall then we have these four uh deserts there's more deserts but again i'm trying to get my the color a balance of having good colored mana versus having enough deserts and i believe with our number of deserts we have what is this 12 deserts is good enough to get one or two deserts in start sacking them start accruing value start searching for more deserts draw more cards so that's the plan again wait back to these we have these four the most important one scavenger grounds uh because it is an emergency exile all cards from all graveyards, even your graveyard, so you gotta be careful about that. However, it is an emergency button, and it is a desert that some people play. So just take note, if they play a scavenger grounds, then Hazazon can attack freely into that opponent. Then we have Endless Sands, right there. And the, basically, this is stores people into the sand. You exile target creatures you control, and then four sack, and bring them all back. The sack part's cool, because you can get it back. Uh, if you do sack this desert, I forgot to mention, but going back to scavenger grounds, if you do sack it, this will go to the graveyard first and get exiled to its own ability before you can uh, play lands, play it back with hazards on. So just remember that. Okay, now let's talk about these two. You can sack it, put, put minus one, minus one counter target creature, make, uh, activate as a sorcery. So you could pay one sack, put a minus one, minus one counter, replay it, pay one sack, put a same counter on the same creature, pay one sack. So you keep putting on counters on the same creature. It'll, it'll eventually kill a creature if you have enough land drops and enough mana to play this. So Gra Grass and Dews is a really good card. I would get that. Um, if, if you don't need colored mana, I would get this second after Hash Up Oasis, of course. Crayer of the Curse, three tap, make a zombie at sorcery speed. So I think this is good. I think the, my priority is always Hash Up Oasis, then Grasping Dunes. I mean, to be honest, Without the memes, I'd pick Grasping Dunes because it's, it's a very cheap way to sack a, um, sack a desert. Heck, you could just tap this, sacrifice this, put a minus one, minus one counter on Hazazon so you can replay it from the graveyard with Hazazon's ability, trigger Hazazon's um, third ability, make two dudes, uh, or, or and then eventually put this on dudes if no one else has creatures. So this is probably the one of the most important ones, the one of the ones I like the most because it has a very uh, low cost to sack, and it's pretty darn good. Okay, we'll go through the other lands pretty quickly. We have the Rainbow Lands, Command Tower, Exotic Orchard, Jet Mirror's Garden. There, Bounce Lands. Bounce Lands are really cool because with Landfall decks, you can play the Bounce Land, bounce itself back, and keep playing it for Landfall triggers. Now we are playing a lot of dual card lands because our mana needs to get better with those deserts. Midnight Hunt Lands, the Slow Lands, I don't know. Battle Bond Lands, Shock Lands. Playing other Utility Lands, right there, Field of Dead because, you know, obviously it's on theme right there seven lands make zombies very very powerful i think it's one of the most powerful lands in commander casual commander so we have that for the themes yavamaya make everything forced because we're playing a lot, a lot of green cards baseju 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 destroy artifact enchantment or land then we have decimus stage with sewer to copy things strip mine wasteland we are playing this specifically because we have random excavator and ways to bring it back from our graveyard you could if you're mean you know, if you have a lot multiple land drops and ram, ram up excavator, you can just strip mine somebody out of the game. That is a strategy I love. That strategy I use with Azusa. And you know what? A strategy I recommend you doing here. 
Then we have some basic lands, of course, always have basics around. All right, that is the deck tech, our desert tokens commander. I love it. I hope you love it too. And I hope you love it so much you give this video a thumbs up, smash subscribe button, hit notification bell to be alerted for new videos in the future. And I have the deck list in the description below. You want to check that out, check out my hazards on deck list. Unfortunately, we're not allowed to run more than one hash up oasis. Uh, otherwise, I would run more than that. And I'm not as crazy as that other content creator who loves half shot races. I only own a play set. Uh, but if I did own a hundred, I would get clear sleeves and back every back my entire deck with real half shot oasis right there. That'd be super cool. Anyways, I'll get these out of the way because we're actually going to do a little gold fishing. We're going to shuffle this deck up and we'll be right back. All right, we are back. With our Desert Commander has us on turn one. Let's see what we get. Boom. Deserts. We're going to get our desserts. Hash up Oasis. Is that true? Did we get our card of the deck? Our main commander card? All right. This is a great hand. Three drops, two drops. Lands makes commander. Okay. Draw a card. I of Oblivion. More two drops. Not bad. We'll play our tap land. Jetmere's Garden. Maybe we could play this as Desert Fall. Depends. We'll pass the turn. If we can draw an untapped land, we'll not play our Desert. Desert of the Indomitable. That is not untapped land. That's a tap land. So, okay. You know, we'll play our Desert. So, we have lots of two drops. This is a three job. I'll just kick it. Because we don't need that this guy. We're not gonna sack lands right away, so hmm. I think we just get impact tremors. Or no, we get a card draw engine up early. We'll play Idol of Oblivion right there. Pass a turn. Turn three. We'll draw a card. Strip mine. Okay. It's not bad. Okay, so what do we do here? Do we play our commander? You know, I think so. Or play Azusa and play these two lands. This land ETB is tapped, obviously. Um, play Azusa, play our lands, do our desert thing next turn. I think so. Let's just uh, let's just again set up for a good next turn. Let's play our Azusa, right? We'll play these lands. We'll even play this desert into play tapped, right there, because we can get realms uncharted and get more deserts. Okay. So we'll do this, turn three, got five lands, great. We got Azusa here, we'll pass the turn. Turn four, now I have a bunch of lands, which is great. Mountain, more lands. Okay, we don't wanna use our land drop yet, we should just play Realms Uncharted here. Now, if we do our colors correctly, play this, we'll play Realms Uncharted, and now we need a land that can cast Hazes on. Right there, at least three lands and cast Hazes on. It doesn't matter what goes in the graveyard because you can get back with Hazes on. So what we'll do is we'll just get some deserts. We'll get the most important desert. I think what we want is a cycling desert. Then we have a mountain, then we need planes. We need a plane cycler here. So let me get these deserts and I'll get back to you. Got my four lands. I'm not gonna lie. This legit took like five minutes to do. This is why Gibson gives this band, right? Cause this is just lands. Can you imagine? You know any card in your deck. All right, these are the ones, right? And since we don't have an opponent, we're just gonna just pretend and just roll. Uh, you know, uh, we'll just roll one, two, three, four. Goes to graveyard. Oops, that didn't work out. Roll again. Five. Nope. One goes to graveyard. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six. That's a three here. We'll take that to the graveyard. No, nope. one, two, three. Yeah, this one goes to the graveyard. Perfect. That's how we do random cards. And we get these two right there, which I guess the opponent should give us these two. Um, I forgot I had a mountain in our hand. So these two actually, if you play any of these two, will not cast Hazes on, but we do have that mountain. Thank God. Almost forgot about that. So what we'll do is play our first land of the turn, cast Hazes on right there and they play desert land cards from your graveyard so we'll just play these two lands directly from our graveyard they come into play untapped then we you know uh create two of these so now we create four of these 
just sweet. Then do we have two drop? We do have two drop impact tremors there. We'll play our impact tremors right there. Tap our idol of oblivion. We will uh, draw a card because we made a token. Porphyros, oh great, that's super sweet. Okay, now that we have tons of lands on our fourth turn, we're ready to go, we'll pass the turn. Turn five, I think we're doing really well here. Tons of lands, this can buff your lands, put itself in the graveyard, remember that. They can sack themselves. So let's put our deserts over here. Right there, untap everything. We have this, we'll draw a card. This can get lands, this can sack um, lands for you to put in the graveyard. Heck, you can even strip mine your own desert if you wanted to. Uh, you can't get strip mine back, but you can get your desert back. So just remember that. Now what we'll do is we will play our Grassing Dooms. First land. We'll make some more sand tokens here. We'll just... This does two damage to each opponent. Six damage total. That's sweet. We'll draw a card. We'll see what we get before we play our land. Source of Plowshares. That's pretty good. Okay. We will... Um, Cycle. Uh, let's see here. We'll play with, pay with this white here. Oops. We will cycle our desert of the true into the graveyard. Draw a card. Exploration. Sweet. Not like we need more land drops, but we could use, always use them. Uh, we'll play our desert of the true from our graveyard. It has his own ability. We'll impact tremors everybody for two again. Make two new dudes. And I believe we have another land drop to go. So we have this forest here. Uh, and we don't need to play that forest. What we'll do is we'll just uh, tap our strip mine, tap Grasping Dunes, sack it, put a minus one, minus one counter or something. Then we will play our Grasping Dunes right from our graveyard again. Make a fresh two set of dudes right there. And guess what? We will uh, pay one. Yeah, we'll just tap this desert here. And then we'll play Exploration right there. Extra land drop. So now we can do that Grassman Dunes thing again. We'll pay one. Um, we'll play with the Mountain. Actually, we'll play Ram at Escobar. Rune, I mean. Uh, Grassman Dunes. Do the same trick. Boom. Again, two new dudes. More damage. We messed up. We could have played Perforos. Yeah, we could have played Perforos as a god and do like tons more damage. But you know what? Very late, never. It's okay. We're still good. Um, yep, and then uh, we'll pass turn. Turn six. I think turn six is going to be an amazing turn for us. We will uh, untap all our stuff here. Assuming has his on still on the board. Every land drop we do, we do three damage to every everything. Six damage, sorry, because you got two dudes. Okay, draw a card. Cradle of the Accursed. That is a desert, but again, you know, why not? We'll play desert. Make two more dudes, uh, deal um, six damage to each opponent, just insane. We'll draw a card because we made dudes, bounce land, right there, that's okay. Uh, we'll just do our trick again, we'll just sack Grasping Dunes, uh, we'll just do it three times. <laughs> Let's just do it three times, screw it. One, two, three, we'll do it three times. Make a fresh six zombies. Um, do 12 damage to each opponent. Kill something here. So this is a, goes into the pile here. There we have tons of mana left. Use our land drops. Let's do Sprouting Goblin with kick, Kicked. Sprouting Goblin. Do that. Let's kick our Goblin here. Right there, get a land, put in your hand. Just to thin out our deck, you know, whatever. And it does say search for a land card with a basic land type so you can start find a shock land here. I just find whatever shock land I can find. Um, uh, yeah, let's find this one. That's good. That's not shock land. What are we talking about? Um, Temple Garden. Sure. We'll take Temple Garden. Put it into our hand. Um, shuffle our deck. And then now we still have Gasm Dunes to do it again. We could tap these three, make sack the cradle, make a zombie, uh, smack our opponents for a bunch of damage. See what else we do. We'll use Perforos to pump. Perforos does have that pump ability right there. Use Perforos to pump the, the non-summoning six sand tokens and go right in. So we got a lot of options. I think Hazan can get really, really out of control with Azusa right here. Azusa, 
And then, of course, you know, the most important desert in the deck, I think, is Grasping Dunes. If at worst case you want more triggers on these and no one has creatures around, you can Grasping Dunes your own dude or Hezazan himself. Just don't kill Hezazan. All right, this is all shuffled. This right here, boom. Okay, even though we don't have a lot of cards, we still have Idol Oblivion to draw some cards. We could, let's see what we can do, you know. Again, we don't really need cards. Our land base is our our cards right there. We get, gain value by sacking our lands, replaying our lands, get more deserts, get more sand tokens, um, get more damage happening here. Draw cards from Eidolon, 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 Eidol of Oblivion, not Eidolon of Oblivion. Anyways, that is the deck tech and the uh, little gold fishing section for Hazazan. I really love this deck. Love landfall, love creatures, but playing that lands out of your um, graveyard. I think this is the first time a commander actually has that where you can play lands from your graveyard. So I think it's super powerful. If you enjoyed this video so far, give the video a thumbs up, smash the subscribe button, hit the notification bell to be alerted for new videos in the future. Again, I have the deck list in the description below. This deck is super fun. And remember, when you play in this deck, most important desert is... No, it's, no, it's this desert. Hash up Oasis. That's right. That's for you, my good friend. And as always... Have a wonderful day.